Here at this ministry, we believe the problem that the church is have, having with so-called pornography is nothing new. It can all be traced back to Balaam's stumbling block in Numbers 25. In the book of Numbers, we learn that Israel is nearing the end of their wilderness journey and camped in the plains of Moab near the border of Canaan. At this point in their history, Israel could be more likened to a church on tour brigade than a nation. For the third and final time since leaving Egypt, Israel has set up camp for an extended period of time, for they have been preparing themselves to enter and claim their inheritance, the promised land, but unknown to Moses and the congregation, an unseen enemy has been waiting for them. If you're not familiar with the book of Numbers and the offence leading up, the region was in turmoil. Fear hung over every nation and people's hearts were unsettled. A force never experienced before was making its way out from the desert. Some thought that it was an invading army. Others talked about a lost tribe. Whoever it was, they were moving in power. Just imagine the scene. A cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night led a people in search of a promised land. A vast multitude covering the face of the earth, walking in formation, approached the swollen banks of the River Jordan. Great joy and excitement lay on one side, fear and terror gripped the other. The Jordan seemed like a great natural barrier. Perhaps this would be strong enough to hold back the invaders, or at least reroute them off in another direction. But it wasn't. The river bowed down and every person crossed over on dry land. Surely the mighty fortified walled city of Jericho, the entrance to the heart of Canaan, could turn back the invaders, with walls so thick that chariots could race side by side upon them, but it too fell after seven days. Seven tribes, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, Gerasites, Amorites and Jeshabites, and 31 fortified cities all started to fall one by one along with kings Sion and Og. Next to face the threat was Balak. Balak was the king of Moab. Moab was a small country nestled between Edom to the south and Ammon to the north. Moab was gripped with fear for it had already tasted defeat. The Ammonites had attacked and conquered the northern half of Moab and now Balak is left with a diminished country and little resources to fight again. The king was distressed for he had personally witnessed what Israel had done to the surrounding nations. So naturally never thought of inquiring what Israel's intentions were. Instead, he let his emotions and senses get the better of him. For if he had have bothered, he would have discovered that God had told Moses, as we find in Deuteronomy 2 and 9, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them, for I will not give you their land. Israel was simply looking a safe passage through to their promised land, and were in fact no threat to Balak's kingdom. But fearing the worst from total annihilation or extinction, like the Amaleks, Balak has no option and resorts to satanic influences. King Balak wanted to destroy God's people by any means possible, so he sends for Balaam the soothsayer. His fame had stretched some 400 miles across the Assyrian desert to the shores of the Dead Sea. Balaam was an eminent practitioner of magic and divination, and Balak foolishly believed that he would be able to change the fate of nations by simply blessing or cursing of them. So after going to the trouble of sending delegations of Moabites and Midnight Elders on a 20 day journey with riches and bribes, Balak wanted results. If you, if you continue to read through the book of Numbers, you come to 22 through to 24. Here you find the incident with the angel and the donkey, the parables of Balaam where he blessed Israel with wonderful and majestic language concerning the common Messiah and Israel's future. You could almost be left with the impression that Balaam is a Mr. Nice Guy, but sadly he betrayed the people of God in the most treacherous way and his doctrine has been doing the same ever since and will continue to do so until the church wakens up or is ruptured. And then we come to Numbers 25 where Israel acted, acted treacherously through spiritual adultery, physical adultery and joined itself to Baal Peor, Satan worship through sex. Balaam knew that it would be pointless for Balak to face Israel in battle he simply couldn't defeat him, and so instead of battle, Balaam instructs Balak to send in the daughters of Moab to seduce Israel into submission through sex. Satan has tried for centuries to defeat the body of Christ through persecution, genocide, torture, murder, political, religious hatred and so on, but with every attack that it has endured, the church has managed to grow back stronger and spread further than before. No other section of humanity has endured the suffering, persecution and martyrdom on the same scale as the Church of Jesus Christ. Okay.